Welcome to our channel. My name is Sam. I'm Ryan. Thank you for being here. Today we are going to sit down and chat with you about Broadway. We never do that we on this channel. We never do that here. What are we? What are we? Theater fans? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually. <laughs> so, as you guys know, Broadway is back from its longest shutdown in Broadway history due to the pandemic we still find ourselves in. So Broadway has figured out some ways to open back up, you know, with with testing and uh, vaccines and all of that jazz trying to return to normal. But of course, that is a massive challenge and Broadway is still, is still struggling, I think. Because of the pandemic, Broadway has had to find ways to pivot and rely on old systems already in place like swings and understudies. If you are a Broadway fan, you have probably heard the term swings a lot recently. For those of you who aren't familiar, an understudy is someone whose chief responsibility is going on for a lead when they are out. And a swing is like an understudy, but instead of just knowing, you know, those one or two tracks, for the lead roles that they would assume if they're needed, a swing can know up to, you know, 10 different tracks. They usually cover like the entirety of the ensemble or sometimes like half of the ensemble and some leads as well. Um, and so not only are they incredibly important to the function of the show if one or multiple castmates are out, uh, but their job is also severely and insanely difficult because mm -hmm. of all of that information that they have to have off the top of their head at any given moment, be prepared to act on, and also be prepared to act on under enormous amounts of stress because mm -hmm. they're usually hearing that they're going on a half hour before the show starts. Sometimes mid-show too. A, a lot of the times mid-show, absolutely, good point. And so a lot of the reasons that you're hearing people talk about swings is because we are still in a pandemic and Broadway is getting along okay, but a lot of productions, new productions, old productions, are having to heavily rely on swings. Mm -hmm. Another reason you're probably hearing about this topic a lot is because the president of the Broadway League, Miss checking my notes, Charlotte St. Martin did an interview talking about the current state of Broadway and said a thing. We have seen some shows cancel sporadically as they are dealing with breakout COVID cases in their companies. And when the president of the Broadway League was asked about it, she said, my educated guess is that the newer shows maybe have understudies that aren't as efficient in delivering the role as the lead is. Some of the older shows have more experienced understudies and more experienced swings. I know one show last week where the lead was out, the understudy was on vacation and the swings were covering other parts and they just didn't have enough people to stand in. The first part of that statement is what garnered a lot of attention, that understudies aren't as efficient in delivering the role as the lead is. Obviously the Broadway community had a very strong reaction to the statement, considering this is coming from the president of the Broadway League. Uh, that makes it sound like, I mean, to put it in even more just casual terms, it just makes it sound like that understudies aren't as good as leads are. And it feels like it kind of diminishes the role of understudies and swings, which especially shouldn't be diminished right now when Broadway is so heavily dependent on them. So the president of the Broadway League, Charlotte St. Martin, made this comment, garnered all that attention, as Sam said, and uh, shortly thereafter, Hugh Jackman made a speech because one of the swings who covered, I think they say in the video, eight different roles, a bunch of ensemble tracks, but also covers Marion, the lead, uh, uh, that swing went on as Marion and was the entire reason that the, the show could happen. Uh, this is that video if you haven't seen it, here are some of his remarks. Covers up to 10 roles. So they all know and learn 10 roles. <laughs> Kathy, when she turned up for work at 12 o'clock, could have played any of eight roles. Yeah. Eight roles. <laughs> it happened to be the leading lady. <laughs> she found out at 12 noon today and at one o'clock, she had her very first rehearsal as Mariam Peru. After 
after Hugh Jackman made that statement, uh, a lot of shows and companies, Disney on Broadway, Wicked, a bunch of other ones released statements, you know, talking about like, we appreciate our swings, we appreciate our understudies, like these people are the reason that Broadway is even possible right now, which is all completely true and absolutely, I think, the right sort of stance to take. For me, I think the purpose of this video is, uh, well, it's a couple things. Like, first and foremost, just so that no one is like confused about our position, like this respect and attention that swings and understudies who are arguably some of the hardest working people in theater, this attention and respect that they're getting is absolutely right, absolutely necessary, and like so deserved. My stance as someone who has worked in theater for 20 years is like, yup, great, that's awesome, and it's not enough. Like respect and admiration and and this I'm not I'm not being like shady I'm not saying it's wrong to make a curtain speech because that curtain speech I'm sure was really appreciated by her and educated the audience but like speeches and posts aren't enough these people work exceptionally harder than the leads in the show. They are put under exceptionally more pressure than the leads in the show and they get paid vastly less and their mental health, the amount of stress that they're under and their physical safety is often completely disregarded. A big thing that I have been seeing that really bothers me even though it's incredibly heroic that these people step in at the last minute, something that I've been seeing a lot in the online conversation is like, you know, props to this person or this swing or whatever because they stepped in with only a half hour rehearsal. They've never rehearsed this role before. And we should not be praising that. We should not be normalizing that. This idea in theater that like the show must go on, that is just codified language for the show must go on no matter how unsafe you are or no matter how unprepared you feel. And understudies and swings are completely necessary. They are the backbone of the theater industry and always have been because they're the only reason the show can go on. But if they aren't adequately paid for the work that they're doing and if they aren't adequately rehearsed for what is expected of them, it is so unfair to just throw them into the fire at the last minute and then retroactively after someone gets in trouble for an off color comment, be like, you guys are so great, good for you. Because even though that feels good and even though it is true they are so great and what they do is absolutely incredible it shouldn't just be expected and it shouldn't only be talked about as like the backbone of the industry and really brave and really great when everyone's just trying to cover up for the fact that the president of the Broadway League said something sh my knee-jerk reaction to seeing a similar comment like this person has never learned this role before they learned it in an hour and then went on that night I was like, why? Like, that's so, I mean, obviously it's incredible that that person has the capability to do that, but my biggest concern is the danger of it. Mm -hmm. Being on Broadway is physically draining from all that I've heard. And throwing someone on stage in a track that they have never even walked before on that stage is dangerous. There are so many, like no matter what stage you're on, there are so many moving pieces, like literally like massive set pieces that like if you're standing in the wrong spot, you could get injured. Like obviously these, these swings and understudies are incredibly talented and, and know how to pull this off. But I think another point you hit so well was just that it shouldn't be expected of them in this way. Right, no, I mean, the, these people are are superhuman. What they put their bodies and their minds through to, 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 to get in the right places, to make themselves seamlessly integrated into the process while also keeping all of the other tracks the, that they know in their head and organized from each other, it's genuinely superhuman. And again, like, we are not discounting that. My big thing is just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mm -hmm. And that's the function of this that really bothers me. And Sam brings up a great point. I mean, I remember when I was rehearsing from Wicked, they would talk about the automation, which is, you know, they, there, there are these tracks in the stage and they and they and there's this thing called a knife and it goes into this little groove and, and that's what carries these giant set pieces on and off the stage. And it's controlled by computers and they don't stop. And so like one of the first things that they told me in rehearsal is like, you have to make sure that you are out of the way of these moving parts because if they hit you, they'll win. And 
I rehearsed the show a billion times. I knew my one track. And then when I was actually in the run, I did it like hundreds of times. So of course I know where everything is. And of course I'm safe because I know what I'm doing, but I got three weeks of rehearsal and the luxury of doing it over and over again. When you're putting someone in a role that they've never done before, you give them a half hour to rehearse it. And then you put them in the same circumstances where if you get hit by something, you lose. You are completely subsidizing the money that you are making tonight to keep this show open on their safety just because you know you can. Mm. And I know that we've talked about this a lot on this channel and if you're sensing a theme, you're right. I am so grateful to be a theater performer. I can't wait to sink my teeth into my next show that I get to do. And the fact that theater is alive amidst a global pandemic is some of the best news ever. And I mean that so sincerely. And just because something's great doesn't mean it can't be improved. And just because all of these people are really smart and really talented doesn't mean that they should be taken advantage of. And what it all comes down to is people at the top saying, just make it work because mm -hmm. I want my money. And I'm sorry, but there are so many examples in other places about how this works better. If you're like a sports team, for example, you have second string, third string, fourth string, you have a backup plan for your backup plans, backup plan. Mm -hmm. And those people, train. They, they are practicing too. They know the drills. They know the book. It's not like the third string quarterback just goes on having never thrown the football to these receivers. That's, that's not how it works. So why should it be any different in theater? And although all of the praise is like totally right on the money and so well deserved, you can see why as an industry professional, I kind of feel like it's lip service mm. because at the end of the day, these people still aren't getting compensated fairly get treated like crap in rehearsal because they are expected to be perfect, but they're given no tools or opportunities to actually hone what is being expected of them. And their mental health and physical well-being are completely disregarded for the concept of the show must go on. And if you as the producer want the show to always be able to go on, then you should probably invest resources in making sure that the people who are solely responsible for making the show go on can do it safely and effectively. And again, we are not trying to say that we think that all of the appreciation for swings and understudies should stop. We just think that sometimes speeches and posts aren't enough. They need to be fairly compensated and they need to be protected and set up for success in a healthy way. They are superheroes. I can't even comprehend how they do it. Yeah, no, I can't either. And I think I think what you just said is so right because it it, it articulates, I think, what the crux of the problem is. Like, right, I, no, like these speeches and these posts, they shouldn't stop. They should keep happening. They should happen all of the time, like even after the pandemic is over because these people deserve praise from what they're doing. But it's all retroactive. Yeah. It's all after the work is already done. It's after everyone can finally exhale because somehow we got through the show, which is something that I have said on Broadway, off Broadway, regionally, so many times like, oh my God, I can't believe we got through that. That should not be the attitude of a show. Yes. So processing that retroactively, oh, good job, retroactively, that's great and everything, but it's way cuter if we are doing these things proactively, making these people feel respected, admired, and safe before they even set foot on the stage so that when they do set foot on the stage, we don't all have to be like, Ooh, what's gonna happen? No one knows because mm -hmm. I can tell you as a professional, like that is the attitude mm -hmm. backstage on these days where people are out. It's like, oh man, like this, I, I've been in shows where they have literally called someone in that day who hasn't done the show in years. And they just come in and they're like, yeah, no, I remember. And it's like, I, now I'm unsafe just in case you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You're unsafe, just in case you're in the wrong place. And we are com like, and you're being put in this super unfair position of like having to save the show with no rehearsal. And, yeah. it's, and it's, it's completely normalized. Everyone's like, oh yeah, no, this is like, well, yeah. this is what we're gonna do. Oh, I'll make some phone calls so that, you know, the producers can take all their money home that night. And it's just not like fair. Mm -hmm. So, all of these things, all of this praise, it's good. We are very like pro understudy, yeah. pro swing here. We just think it's not enough and there needs to be like more happening. And at the end of the day, when we talk about injustice in the theater industry, it always goes to the people hoarding money at the top mm -hmm. who just like don't really value the time, the safety or the financial needs of their staff. Mm -hmm.
that's the tea, sis. Well, that's the tea about everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's yeah. that truly that's the, the tea, tea about, about everything, everything yeah. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's not just Broadway, but yeah. Broadway is, even though Broadway is so amazing for so many reasons, it is not exempt to all of the stupid, awful, terrible corruption that we mm -hmm. see in so many other places. And theater is one of the biggest loves of my life. Why wouldn't I want it to be much more fair and equitable mm -hmm. for everyone involved? Thank you guys so much for watching this video, for taking the time to listen to this and hear our thoughts and opinions. As always, we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to, Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching. We will see you all in our next video. Bye, Bye Daddy.